I'm, that would be email. Uh, this is the build OGM call for Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I think we have a bunch of things to talk about. Um, and we, Pete, any chance you created an agenda already? Uh, nope. Oh, awesome. Okay, so we, we get to freelance here. Free, we get to freestyle uh, agenda style. Um, so partly I think uh, Pete has brought, hey Stacy, morning. Uh, Pete has brought the uh, emerging event sense making to the fore in a really cool way. So we yeah. should talk about that. Uh, Klaus and the food project are, are steaming and we should talk about that. Um, I'm reshaping this idea of putting on a show and I'd love to talk about that. And what other, what other things might we put on said agenda? I was thinking this morning that when we talk about aligning other organizations with us to gather their information and share, we don't really have an onboarding process um, and we don't have a, a sort of a mutual agreement. It doesn't have to be a, a legal agreement, but just what's the onboarding process and how do we affiliate and that sort of thing. And that would be worth contemplating. Uh, love that. And I've tried to head us that direction. And what happened was it sort of rolled back toward the question of, okay, so what does OGM offer other organizations? Which rolled back into the question of, okay, so what is OGM? And what does it mean to be ogm -y? And we've had some of those conversations with medium success and they haven't unfolded back into, oh, good. Okay, so here's, so here's how we approach organizations and what we do, which I would love, love, love to complete. Well, I wonder if it doesn't also involve examining OGM mapping at a, at a somewhat elemental level to create an organizational structure map. You know, if you could filter OGM for organizations in a topic, and maybe you can already, but I don't know, Jerry, in terms of your brain, it's just too big for me to figure out. <laughs> um, but maybe I think- my brain is a hyper object. But what we would, what we, one of the things that we would offer right now, the brain is largely set up to allow one to explore ideas and concepts and knowledge per se, and to then within that context, there'll be listings of organizations that are involved in these areas. And what I'm wondering is if there's a way to tag all the organizations so they sort into fields of interest or something like that. Um, that would make it more attractive to organizations to join in contrast to individuals. And I believe what you just described is central to the mission of Trove, of Vincent and Trove and, and overlaps with what Pete is trying to do with Massive Wiki, but Pete, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I wanted to mostly note um, a connection also to uh, what we clumsily refer to as the entity um, organization relationship fac, uh, which I also note is on the Sprint One deliverables list. Which is a call that you and I uh, set, but then I didn't publicize it out. And we sh I, I would love to just reset that and, and, have, and hold it. I, th I think, um, uh, so another kind of topic uh, is, I think, I, I think a good topic would actually be the charter for this call, um, what this call is trying to do week to week. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I think that work would be good in this call, for instance. Well, to me, it represents a slight, a slight but not necessarily insignificant reframing. Of, of things. And it doesn't have to be within us. It can be that we connect to another matrix that has the same information that we'd like people to provide. That would be very ogm -y in itself and, and very uh, generative commons in itself. But I'm just thinking that, that the more that organizations can approach each other as entities and know that they share values and common threads and so forth, that the more readily they can work together productively. Um, and also I meant to mention to that end that Dave Witzel wrote me a note and said, hey, um, uh, how do we bridge the chats, which is something that, that Pete's been working on and we need to figure out whether it needs funding or not. I don't, uh, I don't know what state that's in, but it would be good to have. Uh, and also that he had that GRC had signed a memorandum of understanding or memorandum of, of agreement, I think, something like that with another entity and might, you know, might we want to do something like that with OGM? 
and that was interesting. Uh, but I, but he sent me the, the other document and it was kind of detailed enough that I'm like, ooh, how do we get, how do we get all these kinds of nooks and crannies um, figured out for OGM? It could be a, it could be a time sink as well. <clears throat> and it's, and it's not an essential to have um, as maybe a simpler, uh, like a fact file between entities. And, and the fact file that Pete was referring to was for an individual coming into OGM. But we may also want some kind of a fact like that, uh, you know, between entities or something, something of that nature. Mark Antoine, um, I'm wondering what would, what exactly would be the purview of such an onboarding? And I agree, it's certainly necessary. Uh, but there's a whole aspect which is kind of the uh, knowledge commons agreement which is part of the, what does it mean to work together? It means, uh, you know, knowledge is uh, commons, probably something like CC BY, uh, share alike. Uh, and, and, and the CC BY is really interesting because we're doing a lot of curation and synthesis mapping. And in a way, all concepts come from other concepts and maps come from nuggets that come from elsewhere. And we want to recognize the origin of those nuggets and we want to recognize the originality of the map even, even if it brings nothing new other than the mapping and the ordering and the curation, which is a value. Um, and that probably means a kind of history. But what I'm saying is there's that's one aspect. Like if we are working with somebody, there has to be this kind of notion, well, working with us means we will quote you, you should quote us. And uh, uh, we're making quilts, <laughs> let's call them quilts, of knowledge. Uh, and we think they have intrinsic value. And then part of that quilt will be the whole question of when, how do you recognize contributions when there's all these organizations, individuals who contributed the elements of the quilt? Uh, and that's interesting, but again, there's, there's kind of two aspects. There's the how mythology, but how kind of basic trust agreement. Now, I would ask you, Judith, that's one aspect, but what do you see as being the onboarding beyond those kinds of trust agreement, because that's that's the part I see well. What's the part I don't see? <laughs> it's mostly what you described, actually, just how do we work together and how do we affiliate? But I'm also thinking about the retrievability of organizational identities in a systematic way from what we have in our repository, in huh. addition to the general comments. Because if I were to go, I don't know right now, I haven't done this experiment, Jerry, so perhaps I'm flawed. But if I were to go in and say, um, early childhood development organizations in the upper Midwest, would that pull out that content from the brain? Because that's not exactly how they're mapped. They're mapped conceptually, parents, siblings, et cetera. Right. Um, so that's kind of my question is, how would organizations find each other in addition to us and know something about that organization then in terms of a profile? You know, so perhaps we would want to solicit from organizations or individuals who know organizations some sort of profile template that could go in that would allow others to find then a similar organization. Let's say I'm in Minnesota and I'm moving to Texas and I'd like to affiliate with a group that is heavily involved in regenerative agriculture because I've been working with Klaus from Minnesota, but now I want to work from Texas. How would I find those entities? Um, that um, maybe, but that's kind of what I was thinking about anyway. Yeah, and Hank and Phil, welcome to the call as well, and Stacey. Um, so uh, at, at the risk of jumping into that particular question in too much detail, um, on the one hand, uh, the brain is not well adapted to logical operator searches. It doesn't do those things and it doesn't do database queries either. So I can't say, unless I have linked something up to the Pacific Northwest and educations and somehow fortuitously that shows up, it can happen in the brain as a tool. Now my brain data has been exported and we could suck it in, suck it into a tool where that's possible. We could tag it up and all that data would be available there. And yet my brain would no, in no means be complete 
uh, enough to be a reliable search of all educational institutions in the Pacific Northwest or whatever. Um, Trove is heading that way, but it's a tiny effort. And there are databases, and there's also Google search, um, which are tremendous and big and already available in some sense. So, so there's kind of a layering of this, which is what have we, what is on our radar? What have we seen that's relevant and interesting and how do we curate that? Um, what are we stewarding as data that we care about? And then what is just out there in the world that we can ping? What are the open databases that matter? Is GuideStar available? Uh, what, are the, what are the database searches for educational research organizations, for example? What, what, what would be the, the best source to search for that? And then what do humans know about this terrain and how can they amplify that search capacity? So, so I think that describes kind of a long-term view of, of how these things layer out. And then my brain is only one view, one radar view of what's going on. Other people using Roam, using uh, what, what, what have you, other kinds of tools, uh, uh, Mark uh, Carranza and MX could have their own perspectives on the same bodies of work and a similar kind of question. I guess the question I have, and, and I'm not saying this might not be met other ways, and it may just be a long-term thing that we consider, but I know how to go find organizations. I know how to search Google, search academics, search publications, all those kinds of things. I have no way to actually get at the personality and cooperativity of those organizations. And many of them I know not to be very affiliation linked because they're too busy protecting their brand as this particular society. <clears throat> and so what I'm dreaming would be possible is that I would be able to search <clears throat> the professional knowledge communities in the same fashion that I can search for individuals on a more finely grained level of they like to partner, they're responsible partners, they have similar values and so forth. And I'm gonna to pass to Pete because I think he's gonna say something like this among whatever else he wanted to say, but Pete and I have this longstanding real resonance that these kinds of searches require a technical search, which is like a search engine that knows something in the back end, and a human search, a router, a connector, a matchmaker, whatever you want to call it. And that the coupling of those two into some kind of cyborg human who really, really understands the search tools, but is phenomenal. And, and, and then you need to sort your way through the human routers to the human who is closest to that community of practice and has some understanding of the openness to cooperation of the entities in that area, et cetera, et cetera, right? You kind of want to find your way quickly to the human who has this capacity, but, who's, but who has an understanding of the facts on the ground for that group. And that's going to be completely quirky and require a, a pretty broad network of trust, which is an interesting thing to try to set up. Like, exactly. We, yeah. That's the challenge because, because from my experience, I can get to the executive committee of any organization. If I wanna find a group that does X, I can find a group and a listing of groups and I can look in a given state and I can find the board of directors. But I don't know anybody on the board of directors and I don't know anybody who knows anyone on the board of directors. And so I'm reluctant to just cold call the head of the organization and say, my organization is interested in X, Y, Z is it possible that your organization would be similarly interested? And if so, to whom should I talk? And they're going to be unlikely to tell you that they've been locked up in a lawsuit or a content, contentious exactly. thing with this other organization for a decade or whatever. Right. Uh, Pete, Pete and Marc Antoine? I didn't mean to hijack this call, Jerry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, it, this, is, this is like, I think, really useful detail for where we're heading. Um, the, the thing I was going to end what I was going to say on is um, I'd, I'd like to call rat hole. Um, I, this is an amazingly inter interesting topic. And I would really like this call of week over week, not any specific call, but week over week to be about OGM getting itself built, whatever that means. Um, so, you know, some of the things we talked about, I think the, the quilting project or the onboarding discussion, I think is really important and um, some kind of charter or understanding of, you know, what OGM's relationship is to even its members. I, th I think that's the first one. And then to other organizations, I think all of that is building OGM work. And that's what I wish this call were about. Um, just real quickly, uh, Judy, it's a, 
uh, awesome. That was an awesome little arc. Uh, Trove is doing that directory stuff and doing it really, really, really well. Um, Jerry, you said something interesting, which is Trove is small right now, and it is very small kind of compared to things, but it's also very well built and could get big very fast. Um, uh, Jerry also did a great, um, uh, a great exposition on the way that he and I think that um, I, for me, Trove is an expert tool uh, and regular folks aren't going to use it very well. And what you want is a, a set of people who are really good at using a directory system, probably multiple directory systems and doing matchmaking for you. So Judy, the, the other part, you said something interesting. What's the personality and cooperativity of an organization? For me, the interface to that knowledge looks a lot more like uh, CSC Mattermost. Um, and in, in fact, OGM at large. OGM doesn't do this very well yet, but it could be, um, uh, it could be kind of a mastermind group where you can ask things like, hey, I need to talk to somebody on the executive committee of XYZ. Um, you know, how does anybody here know how to make an introduction to that? Jerry and I are in a couple of those mastermind groups where you can ask those kinds of questions and, and get somebody to say, oh yeah, I know somebody at Google or, oh yeah, I know somebody at Walmart. Um, uh, so I think that that's the, there's a wish that we could make that automated. And I think it's a, a futile wish. I think that's, that's gone straight into human uh, network weaving. It, it has, but, but at the same time, not everybody has the same ability to even search for the organizations that the people in this room have. Yeah, so so my my answer to that is we should get more people into things like CSC Mattermost, where it's a low barrier to entry and you're connected to a bunch of people who are who are more and more expert at things. Okay. And so my answer to that, if we need to build that more, it's more how do we make OGM accessible and friendly and inviting and have a thousand people or 10,000 people in it and still feel like it's being OGM and still, you know, having a short path to an expert, you know, and maybe it's, maybe it's not one hop in our hundred person network, but, you know, maybe it's two hops in a 10,000 person network. And, and it, just a small add, if our Mattermost chat can become very hospitable to dozens of communities of practice, that go deep and, and can find you the human that knows something about whatever the domain might be, that would be a big win. I, I find it really interesting that the question of human trust, and, and certainly it's obvious to me that being a hub of trust is a service. I mean, what is OGM about, connecting? Well, connecting trust is a service. And, and, and for me, it's obvious it, it's not just search. And, and I, I'd like to go back quickly on the notion I've spoken often about data translucency. Like if you have, if you're making a relationship with another organization, one thing you want to have to trust them is a honest conversation about what worked, what didn't, what they learned and all the, the, the failure stories. Now, it's perfectly understandable. This is something you want to learn that you can trust that they're learning from their failure, but it's obviously something they don't want to make public because <laughs> it's a reputation obviously. killer. <laughs> and, 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 and that's why this, this, this trust has to be progressive. And you would want to make those stories accessible because there's so much to learn about them. And is there a way to, for example, anonymize the story and say, this is the story and okay, I'd like to meet the organization that had that uh, setback and solved it. Uh, or again, this is where a trust broker is extremely important to say, okay, I'm willing to, to open my kimono and show as, uh, as someone else was putting it and show my, uh, you know, not so necessarily so glamorous, but real stories about me and how can we um, and, and you will, and we'll, we'll sh share honestly. That's, that's re how real trust is. That's, that's beautifully said. Thank you. Love that. Um, so how do we, I'm interested in turning, as Pete said, this calls attention toward build things that build OGM. And I'd love to do that in some kind of a rhythmic way, meaning 
uh, move the spotlight to, a, to an initiative and ask a series of questions like, what is it, what is it that's keeping this initiative from, and, and it could be the, the scrum sort of stand up kind of questions like, what are your goals, right? What do you need right now? What's in your way? How can we help? Uh, it could be some other kind of format. Uh, we might need to actually step back from some of these things. Uh, but I'd love to do more of that. And I added an item to the agenda, which is to, to talk about the generative commons calls, because uh, basically that's turned into Stacy, Michael, and me uh, talking about stuff. And Michael's asking fabulous questions that we need to answer, but also we need a process to take that conversation and turn it into some documents that live on Massive Wiki, on the OGM Wiki, so that we can point to them and say, here's what the generative commons agreement starts to look like, and on a simple website. Um, so that we're not just talking about the, the generative commons agreement, but have a thing, that, um, a document that starts to materialize out of that uh, out of that fog. Um, any thoughts on structure process? Bueller? Just a quick observation that um, we're, I, we're, we're stuck in this uh, bootstrap phase of trying to structure something that doesn't have a structure. Um, so I, I, in those kinds of situations, I try to look for the, the most foundational thing, right? Um, and, and for OGM, a lot of it is around what, you know, what is OGM? Um, what, and what's its mission and vision and what's its relationship to the people who think that they're members of OGM? So it, until we have that kind of grounding, a lot of the discussions are, you know, they're, they're multifocal rather than, you know, um, focused. And, and, you know, I, I, I stipulated that part of OGM's charm and wonder is the multi multifocality of it. Um, the fact that we're all kind of fuzzily, you know, fuzzily arranged, but, um, but we, we have for a long time also wanted to come to a, 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 a coherence, a coalescence that is strong and sharp enough that it starts to be able to say OGM is a thing and wants a relationship with GRC or OGM is a thing and it wants a relationship with Trove. And we're not quite there yet. Agreed. Uh, Klaus? Yeah, <clears throat> I think Mark hit it on, on the nail. I hit the nail on his head here. Uh, the, the, it's about relationships. You know, we, there's only so much you can automate, and and, uh, it, and I'm just in a conversation with someone who thinks software is going to uh, solve agriculture. No, software is a tool. You know, software is a tool that somebody needs to deploy. Uh, and, and, and the better the tool is, you know, the more useful it is. But at the end of the day, uh, it's people who are central to building relationships and uh, making themselves known, maybe. Um, so, so uh, um, yeah, but, I mean, for example, the idea of guilds, uh, if we break that out into more detail, then people know where can I find what, uh, and, and uh, uh, where, where is the, uh, uh, the one or two or three people that I can go to for specific questions, and that can become apparently quite, quite easily. Uh, Phil? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I think a lot of how we are going to build relationships goes back to what Pete said is kind of figuring out who and what we are. Um, so if we could spend some time during these calls, even if it's like, right, this call is dedicated to our mission, to our vision, to whichever components we need to flesh out, I think that would be a useful way to start kind of moving OGM forward in a concrete way. Um, and it could be something like, hey, here's the ideas. Maybe a smaller group goes away and works on that and brings back a proposal for the next session. When we decide, like we spend 10 to 15 minutes saying like, right, this is what we gathered from last session. This is what we think the mission and vision should be. Is there any feedback um, or have an outside working group for each of those components? Um, I just think, yeah, we kind of need to clarify what exactly we're all kind of involved in. Um, and I would leave it there. Sort of a divide and conquer strategy makes good sense. Um, Klaus, your hand is still up. Is that from before? Great, uh, Judy. I was just thinking that one way that this information is sometimes collected in an inboarding process for lots of client relationships and other things are some statements about 
you know, one of the most meaningful things in the last year <clears throat> or something very disturbing in the last year, some, some anecdotal personal story information. Um, and I don't know if that's appropriate for this in terms of an organizational prospect, but um, it comes to the question of trust because that's how you build trust with people is by sharing personal perspectives. Makes good sense, thank you. Uh, Hank? Um, yeah, I was involved uh, in the uh, generative common calls uh, regularly until I went on a three week holiday, sorry about that. Uh, but now that I'm back, I had a look at what's on Mattermost. I put some suggestions there. I uh, sort of tried to update the Google Doc that Jerry made a month or two ago. So uh, both for the Generative Commons call, which I'm really interested in helping to take forward, and this call, which I'm only here for a second time, I think a good practical way forward is that someone makes a work in progress documents uh, which are open to everyone. They could be on Google Docs, they could be on Mattermost, and they state some positions. This is what it's about. This is what we want it to grow into. This is how we think it could grow. And then there's a ball to be kicked around because until there's a, a ball to be kicked around, uh, it could go anywhere. But once there's a ball, uh, people start focusing more on the goalposts. And then uh, the, the original prototype could be changed a hundred times, but at least there's a document that a group of people is working on. And I do like the football metaphor as well. Um, and we have a place to put said documents, um, massive wiki plus whatever else. Um, so I think partly we need to shepherd ourselves toward creating artifacts out of these conversations. Um, and I would love to stand up guilds. We ended up having a couple of conversations about guilds that stalled on the word guild. Um, and that kind of stuck us on a sandbar. And I, I, I'm, I don't know what to quite do about those sorts of conversations because, because there's a bunch of words like sovereign uh, and others that are being, that are being uh, that's marked. A load, that's a loaded word too. Yeah, that are being marked like as, <laughs> as not happy words. And, and how do we get past this with, with either either completely clean vocabulary, which is very hard, I think. If it were easier, we would have solved it, uh, or something else, or call-outs or caveats for the words that we do use. I, 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 again, I think the, the thing to look for is the most foundational thing that we can work on so that we, we can start to have a foundation. Um, right now, our foundation is, is built on sand. So you know, as the winds and waves come, we kind of like shift around and float around and talk about different kinds of things. Well, the center of guilds would be expertise or knowledge. And so maybe there's some words um, around those that might- I, I'm, I'm actually interested in the foundation of OGM. Um, I think uh -huh. guild is an interesting thing, but it's on top of, you know, you, you can't connect guilds or whatever you would call them to something unless there's an OGM to connect it to, right? We haven't okay. gotten there. We haven't gotten there with OGM. Um, and I, I'm envisioning, I'm sitting here in my head going into what does that conversation look like? What conversations like it have we had in the past? How likely are we to actually draw that to a conclusion? And I'm mixed on that. I'm really mixed because I'm not sure that we're going to agree on definitions that, that, that are fruitful for how to pin this down. And part of, uh, Marc-Antoine, thank you for, for being here. Uh, this long. Um, I, I, I think that's exactly a good point, Jerry. Yeah. Um, so um, by definition, better, you know, better firming up of a foundation is exclusionary, right? We're going to, I mean, the process that we keep wanting to do but not doing is making a firm foundation and, and making a call, judgment call. You know, this is this is what we want the relationship to OGM and it's between OGM and its members to be. And that means it can't be a bunch of other things, right? So we keep getting to the point where we 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 want to make a decision, we want to be firm, but we also want to retain our optionality. So, you know, we can have one or we can have the other. Um, if 
if we wanted, we could decide that um, OGM is all about optionality and all about fuzziness and all about, and maybe lean into that. That might be a thing that we could do. But whenever we talk about OGM should make a, a, a something like OGM should have guilds or whatever they're called, uh, OGM should have a relationship with another organization. You're talking about an organization that's called OGM, and it has you know it has fir firmer edges than we're used to, and it's just you know. So I, I would actually be okay with the meta conversation should OGM ever firm up and and if we decided that it shouldn't, I would be okay with that. And I think we could lean into that and make make something work. Um, but that's not the conversation that we've been having with ourselves for a year. It's a lot more about, I wish there were an OGM fund. I wish there were, you know, I wish we could support consultants. I wish we, you know, there's a bunch of things where it's like, yeah, you need, you need to, we need to go for it. And we need to say what this thing is and what it's not. Which is the process I'm actually, and thank you for the way you just framed that, Pete. That was really helpful to me. Um, and the process that I'm in the middle of and, and a, a bit stuck on is how to pitch OGM to potential investors for grant funding. And that that view of what it is, what activities it is they're supporting, what entity it is they're supporting has evolved a whole bunch in the last three weeks of, of fabulous conversations, which is, partly the quilt and other stuff that are sort of shifting around. Um, and I, I agree that, that firming that up and crystallizing that into a way to explain it is uh, essential because otherwise I can't pitch and we don't know what we're talking about. And, and Pete, I have, I have, little, I have little trouble um, envisioning the conversation about the entity member relationship conversation. Like, let's get that done. Let's have a call. Let's, let's turn that into a doc. That thing, that thing I can totally see uh, as well as the document for people who become kind of staff for OGM, like the, the agreement that Phil uh, uh, was drawing up, I, those things make a lot of sense and seem more uh, more easily sort of uh, turned into something that we can point to and say, "Here, here's 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 the nascent agreement for what what it means to be in this in this community." Um, my so my my intuition or my my sense uh, is that that's one of the most foundational things that we can do, and so if. And so, Jerry, we've we've been uh, you and I have been distracting ourselves by by kind of specifically not scheduling that or or you know. Let's, let's pick a time during this call for, for the, to book this, that call. You know, so so to me now it seems like that's that's the most important topic for this, or you know, one of the most core topics for this mm -hmm. call. Yeah. Um, Sorry, uh, that one topic about the entity relationship document, or what do you mean? Well, one of, yeah, either that one or yeah. or something quite you know closely related to it. Well, I, th um, I think one one item we can just knock off like here is uh, you and I figure out a time for to set that call and announce it to OGM right away and and go hold it. That'll that'll get that in motion, and then if you and I focus on actually drawing up the document, we have that we have that done. Can you clarify um, what is, you mean is there by a reason, that call? Pardon? Yeah, is there a reason that call isn't just this call? Um, sorry, and do you want to spend do you want to spend the rest of this call on perfecting that document with everybody? Um, I I I think I think two things. I think this call is a perfect venue for that discussion. And I don't think it's a you and me discussion. I think this discussion is with as many OGM people. So the, the reason I might schedule additional calls right. is to involve even more OGM people. But yeah, that's, I would that's exactly would, what I'm saying. I would take this call time and hammer that thing out until it's done. Uh, I, I don't know about this week. I don't know where our headspace is, you know. I would be I, happy to schedule it for this Friday, for example, most any time and just go for it and announce it to the whole community and say anybody who wants to show up, that'd be great. Um, but I, I really want more than just you and me in, in the document for sure. I, I agree. I, I worry that scheduling a call de novo um, is going to drop us into a lower state of activation energy. The, the folks around this call, the, the, fo the fact that we do this every Tuesday adds a lot of um, energy uh, that, that we can bring into that discussion, I think. So I would love to talk about how that separate call went and improve it and perfect it in the next of these calls, but I don't want to use this call to begin that conversation over again. Okay, my own my own bias because we're, we've got so many items on the agenda in some sense. We've got one important I'd, one. Yeah, I'd like to go back to to Pete's question about 
you know, getting down and making the sand bedrock. Um, it, it, I wonder if it would be helpful for each of us to send to a central location or to all of us um, descriptive terms or outputs or measures or attributes that we would say characterize OGM. I think we might find great similarity, although wording would differ vastly. And that might help us frame the nature of the commitment of energy, time, trust, and so forth to the organization. Because this didn't come into being overnight. This wasn't a bloom of, of one day. This has been coming for decades, literally. And I think that those who have been engaged for periods of time and remained engaged have a sense of what this organization means to us. So it might be helpful just to have kind of like we tried in the workshop, well, what does this really mean <laughs> to you as a, as a member? Why do you keep coming back? Um, and, and what do you expect from the others in the group? Questions like that um, might be a way to firm up who we are. But Pete, you may have some more specific things in mind too, because it's clear you've thought about this a fair bit. Um, I, I think the exercise of thinking about what OGM is to each of us is good. I, I, um, I think I would do that in, in a group call rather than separate. And, and we've also got the workshop results to, to go back and look through. We also have a call specifically where like, what is OGM? Uh, we, you know, hosted a call for that. I can point back to that recording. That's easy. Um, and Michael. Yeah, um, I endorse the idea of, of using this conversation to discuss this and discussing it as a group uh, at a later point and, um, creating documents around it. I just posted something uh, in the chat um, and I think that um, there's a certain, I, I was really intrigued by, you know, Pete's use of, use of the word um, optionality and maintaining optionality as potentially a goal that hasn't been a spoken goal, you know, and, and I think there's a certain, um, and I say this uh, with um, perhaps, um, perhaps my own issues in play, but there's, there's a perfectionism in uh, maintaining all options. Um, like nothing, nothing can be wrong if everything's on the table. And we've sort of, we've sort of, you know, nothing OGM has done has been wrong yet because we haven't like taken a hard stance on anything. And, you know, we can be, we can be a piece of software, we can be a, a trade organization, we can be a church, we can be a, all these different things potentially we can stand up subcomponent, you know, for profits, all those different things that we could do that we talk about, um, you know, make our dreams, make our dreams harder to fulfill, but, but never squashed. Um, and I think we need to squash some of our dreams um, and, and like just limit, limit our reach and say, you know, we're this, not that, and that's okay. And, you know, and maybe a few of us who are here won't be interested in us anymore because we're not, like if we decide we're not a source of funding for other entities, we're not that, and some people who are here for that might leave. Or we decide, you know, we're a for-profit company. Well, then some other people might leave. And if we decide, you know, all those different things, I think are, are, they're holding us, they're keeping us happy and wide and free flowing, but they're stopping us from taking any true action. Um, yeah, uh, Hank just posted 
if everything remains on the table, you can never be wrong. <laughs> he's, oh, yeah, oh, he's, you're just quoting he's me. basically I mean, paraphrasing sorry. you yeah, for yeah, as, oh, as note taking. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so let me go. Let me go and then pass the mic to Klaus. Um, so I'm not sure I'd use the word perfectionism, which is a different thing, but I think that optionality is a character flaw that April and I both share. Is that is that April doesn't like uh, to plan weekends because she likes like she want just wants to be able to do with what, you know with her time whatever it is. So it's like making weekend plans to meet with somebody is hard. It's like I got to strategize around it. And for me, um, you're right. When 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 there's no facts on the ground, everything is possible, and, and all these dreams are still kind of alive. And we do have to narrow down these options. Um, and I see it I see it as we have to pick some things to do now and right up front which will get us uh, oriented in the right direction. The complication is that um, over time, my understanding of what it is we might do and how we might go about it has evolved, emerged, bubbled, turned, mixed a lot in the 18 or so months we've been, we've been at this. I mean, a lot. And some of the fuzzy ass conversations where when we start, we don't know, really know why we're sitting here have led to some of those insights. Like, like the, 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 the looseness of the conversations has enabled richer, more interesting visions to show up. And they all look equally impossible for me to do because even getting some of these agreements sort of like pinned down and put down on a piece of paper is hard for us. And Michael, my conversations with you around the generative commons are really important to me because we have, I think, differing visions about how OGM stands up and what role it plays in an ecosystem that includes for-profit companies and individuals trying to make a living and all those kinds of things and how much how, for ex one detail that I don't know that we've ironed out is, does OGM host any original projects of its own or is it only a funding vehicle for other entities projects? And I think it holds projects of its own and I don't think you want that, but I don't know and we haven't figured that out. And I think that's part of, part of like, what is OGM? And we're busy kind of negotiating that through these great conversations that are going slowly, right? Um, so in some sense, picking the minimum set of things to do now and lock down and say, this is what we are is an awesome idea. Uh, if we can do that in a way that preserves late binding and late potential so that later, that means we could still do these things. That's my, like, I'm trying to figure out how to define an OGM right now that, le that leaves open these really juicy um, long-term plans without acting on the, you know, whatever you lock down now, whatever architecture you pour, whatever concrete you pour early kind of dictates your path. Architecture is destiny in a lot of senses. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out what is the least thing we could do that, that helps us tip a bunch of other entities toward what we're doing, for example, because we're doing it in a way that's easy to emulate and that it's compelling to do. That, that, that's like a goal for me. Like, like, what could we do that others are like, ah, well, I'll have what they're having because they're making headway against these big problems that we're all trying to solve. That would be a good thing. Um, so, so I'm not a clever enough thinker about what is the minimal set of things that does that, 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 that puts in place a core that is a visible core that, that is durable and makes sense to people that then moves forward. And my best efforts on that are what I'm trying to do in, in the OGM pitch. Uh, Klaus and Pete. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of us, you know, circling and struggling, trying to figure out where can I engage and what can I do and where can I add value. And <clears throat> my easiest way to summarize that would be help someone who is helping someone. You know, um, and and uh, just find find a place where your skill set is uh, valid and, and and useful and and get into it. Um, we had a conversation yesterday, you know, on on the uh, 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 Google Doc, I mean, on the Google uh, forum, and Ken was asking Pete, so you know, this all makes sense, uh, but what do I do? I mean, how do I get into this thing here, right? So. And I posted, you know, the, the latest update from Project Drawdown fully, where he went through sector by sector of the economy. So it doesn't matter if you're an engineer or a mechanic or, you know, a banker. I mean, there is, a, the, there is a visual, you know, that in each sector of the economy, there's stuff that needs to be done you know, in order to protect ourselves, in order to... Uh, shift you know, our economy into a different direction. And that's really what it's as basic as it is. You now it's in search of uh, how can I help somebody 
who is helping somebody, you know, because it, it's a it's a groundswell up, and it, it, it it's uh, it's that trust movement that Jerry, you know, you're talking about. You know, we need to find ways to identify people we can trust, and maybe that's you know, a role for OGM, you know, because anybody in this forum here. Uh, has to be trustworthy, you know, and this will disclose itself quite fast. So, so that's already that's a big thing, you know, to to know that uh, you're within a group of people you can trust. And so, it's maybe not at all so complicated. You know, it's uh, and it's very individual. You can't uh, ask uh, to create an organization that does it for you, right? I mean, you have to individually determine. You know, uh, what you how to bring your skills and your uh, energy to bear. And so that's uh, how I would define it. Thanks, Lars. Pete? Uh, thanks. Um, Jerry, I wanted to, to speak to your uh, so, uh, looking for a solution um, to both do early binding and late binding. Um, you know how we how can we have a firm structure now, but also preserve optionality for for future things later. Um, um, and as I said in the chat, I'm also I have the character flaw of preserving fun, uh, optionality and and perfectionism. Um, uh, I, I have a suggestion actually, uh, uh, an engineering suggestion, which I'm pretty sure will not make any sense to you, but um, I can say it anyway. <laughs> um, uh, and it's also related to something that I've been wanting to talk about a little bit um, about using uh, hashtags rather than domain names. Um, so this this uh, came up with Jordan and me actually in a discussion we were having um, about his um, about his wanting to make a movement of you know the most important thing basically and how how can you name that and hold it with enough space? How, how can you name any movement with enough firmness that people are attracted to it, but without feeling like making anybody feel like they, you own it, right? So the the suggestion I had from him was to use a hashtag actually. Um, so going way back in my OGM uh, tenure, um, I used to say OGM for me is a verb. Um, and we've, we've said that OGM is, is like an adjective, OGME. Um, maybe OGM is more like a hashtag and less like an organization. Um, and, and then, uh, Jerry, you see the things that I do. Um, I instantiate very hard, hard edge things like uh, Collective Sense Commons or Massive Wiki or a little less hard edged, but. Um, I, I needed more focality, I think, more focal points, um, massive human intelligence, right? So, um, so that's me saying, I'm going to draw a foundation here. I'm going to start firming up a foundation called Massive Wiki. And it, it does certain things and it doesn't do certain things, right? Collective Sense Commons does certain things and it doesn't do certain things. Um, so maybe maybe a path for it. I think a solution, an engineering style solution to your question, how can I have something firm and how can I have something diffuse? Is the diffuse thing maybe is just a hashtag and the firm things start to have names and start to have bank accounts and start to have, um, you know, uh, uh, members like hard edged members. I'm a member of, you know, um, Collective Sense Commons or I'm not, right? So maybe that's a solution. Oh, that's that's working for me. All right, Michael, go ahead. You're muted. There we go. Um, I was just going to say that it's funny because as we were as we were talking earlier, um, I was thinking about um, Black Lives Matter and Me Too, and you know the idea of uh, a movement that you know that has the has the challenge. I think of Black Lives Matter in particular. You know, Black Lives Matter is a movement, is ill-defined um, in a lot of people's eyes, um, has entities that raise funds, um, have, you know, I mean, it, it's complicated. It's really complicated, but it's, its optionality is certainly preserved by the fact that it exists as a hashtag, um, and, and Me Too even more so. 
um, and you subscribe to it and you can't, you can't put borders on it. There, there's no entity that you can say, oh, sorry, you're not, you know, me too. You're not Black Lives Matter. You're officially, um, you know, uh, excommunicated from this movement because it's a hashtag that anybody can use. Um, that's great. That preserves optionality, but it's not a thing that you can go out and necessarily raise funds on. Whereas, what, like what Pete was saying, entities within that that subscribe to the values could conceivably do different things, some of them for profit, some of them not for profit, some of them for the commons, whatever. Um, I, I don't know though, I think that works in terms of optionality. I don't know if that works for you personally in terms of like having OGM be a thing that is your home. Um, 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 I like the hashtag. Yeah, Phil, I'll pass it to you in a second. I just want to reflect on this. A, a couple of things. One is um, uh, even just sort of figuring out how to maintain a definition of what is OGME and sort of role model it kind of works in a hashtag way, but also easily suffers kind of dilution from anybody jumping in and saying, oh, yeah, we do that. And it, I've seen this happen with design from trust. It's like, oh, yeah, we're doing design from trust or whatever. It's like, actually, I would object to most of what you just called that. They're like, you're not doing it at all. And you don't even understand the concept. It's like, that happens a bunch, right? So, so how do you preserve some identity of what it is the thing is? And in Black Lives Matter, there is a website, blacklivesmatter.org, where I bought a mask and a t-shirt. And like, it was a bit, and they're not claiming to be the center of it, but but it gave me a feeling that there was some, some place to go. Uh, in the umbrella movement in Hong Kong, they intentionally didn't want to have a leader or, or a center because they would be cracked down on and arrested and taken you know, out of society. So lives were at stake there, which is very, very different. But I really like the idea that this is more like a movement or a hashtag than an entity. It, the question is, is there any entity, and this goes back to the how many OGMs are there question that Pete and I had, is there any entity in the middle that's called OGM and what should it be and what does it call and what does it put on its website kind of thing, which is doesn't need to be a, a showstopper here. Um, but I'm trying to figure out how to foster what it means long enough and in a way that's kind of exclusive of others who would co-opt or corrupt or hijack it until it until it actually kind of is a thing that people understand. And then let a thousand flowers bloom, let's then plant flowers in that field. And, and I like the idea of having concrete entities that just do a thing. Um, and that's how I'm thinking about the proposal that I'm the pitch that I'm putting together, um, which are which are easy to describe. And it's like that it looks like this, but it's different and interesting and better than because of this. Okay, done. Let's let's go. So that that kind of makes a lot of sense to me. But I'm trying to figure out how to how do we how do we keep some degree of control over this uh, until it's flying in the right direction in the right attitude and until other people can say oh this claimant of being part of the movement is actually not in the movement because something because because of some attributes go ahead Phil yeah it's it's I I do like the the hashtag uh, notion it, it it is helpful to be less um, less definitive than an organization. It kind of seems like we're, we're, we're kind of talking in circles a little bit, which is helpful because I think this is an interesting conversation around how organizations define themselves or how groups are, or how that works. But we're kind of coming back to again, like what exactly is OGM and, and what does it mean to be a member of OGM? So I'm, I'm kind of, I guess, struggling with, we still need to define what OGM is, if it's a movement, if it's a organization, whatever it is, what does it mean to be affiliated with OGM? How, how can we define that? So I, I would say that- I'm, I'm gonna jump in there yeah. real quick and I apologize for jumping. Yeah, through, yeah, work away. But, work ahead, but it's the, if, if OGM is a hashtag, then the, the conversation shifts, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you would have, uh, an organization, a lot more hard-edged organization that's promoting consultants or distributing funds or something like that, it would have probably a different name. And then it would use the hashtag open global mind. 
um, and then another organization, and it would use the hashtag Open Global Mind. And then each of those organizations has a lot better footing, foundation, stuff like that. And we could say, okay, um, in this meeting we're talking about distributing funds. How do how do we do, do that? You know, whatever the name of the that organization, how do we do that? And by the way, we're doing this in the open global mind mindset, you know, um, yeah. another part of that open global mind hashtag thing is how do we protect it, right? Um, so Jerry's brought up a, a good point, which is that it's really easy when you're when you've got a meme and a movement like Black Lives Matter, it's really easy for people to misappropriate it, sometimes by accident, sometimes on purpose, sometimes to dilute the original effort. And then you get the the you know the the mimetically speaking, without any judgment about content, um, you get uh, the, the weird things like blue lives matter, right? Or all lives matter. Yeah. And then those spawn kind of like knock on, you know, mimetic effects that may or may not help the original meme, the original hashtag. Um, brief, brief add to that. Um, there's a quote I read yesterday by Vitalik Buterin about how great movements need a benevolent dictator up front and then they morph into some other organization. Something like that, and I, I and I say that at the risk of skirting into the uh, the source conversation that we were having around uh, uh, everything else. Um, Phil, you weren't quite done. Yeah, just the one thing I wanted to say is that we, if if as a consultancy or or as part of this, we're we're knowledge weaving and we're we're pulling. And we talked about this yesterday, Jerry. We're pulling the most out of these conversations and, and these meetings. And I think this is. This is an extremely helpful conversation because this is something that a lot of organizations struggle with. Like, how are we pulling the like the important granules from this conversation in a way that can be teachable or shareable? And that's part of, I don't know, I think that's part of making the most of these conversations internally as an example for external or people that are affiliated with us is something we, I think we should focus on as well. And yeah, I'll leave it there. I totally agree and love that. And the only way we're doing that right now is that this recording will be available on YouTube openly and publicly and in our playlist and blah, blah, blah. But at this moment, and I will, I will personally debrief some into my brain, which I will publish and will be unfindable one from the other. They'll be like in separate little worlds. Uh, Pete may post the agenda to Mattermost Wiki, but we haven't really taken notes on the agenda together. So it's not much of a collective document. So yes, and how do we do more of that? Which takes me back to two conversations. One is about EES, which we won't have time for now because we're coming up at the top of the hour, but I, I'd love, and I think Judy too, to go deeper into what EES is doing and how it's doing it. I think that's a, that's a really important thing. And that fits nicely back into the second thing, which is I just wanted to report in so you can all stew on it. Um, I don't remember now who this conversation was with, but I was kind of pitching the big quilt. And I realized that a quilt is a damping mechanism. It's not a, woo, I'm building a quilt. It's like, uh, you know, quilts are soft and cushion you from the ground and whatever. And, and then they said, um, then it, it was a guy and I don't remember who it was. He said, um, could you scroll back a little bit? I really like that weaving the world thing that you said. And so that shifted things around for me. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe the show is called Weaving the World. And it's, it's, a, it's a blog, 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 underground. It's a movement that looks like EES plus a memory. Um, it repeatedly doing, deconstructing the conversations, modeling them, et cetera, et cetera, creating communities of practice, pointing to those that exist, et cetera, around the different topics. Uh, and that the thing that it's contributing to, the commons artifacty thing that it's contributing to is the big quilt. So weaving the world is busy weaving, the big quilt, which is just a temporary name we give this thing in the middle. And I just wanna draw our attention also to what is that thing in the middle? Because I'm sitting here thinking, and I think the flotilla calls are getting toward this sort of kind of, but they're talking more about the functionality of different entities. But, but I'm, really, I'm really intrigued by, I published my damned brain. It looks like Windows 95 and it's a, it's a thing on its own and it can contain URLs. And the way I weave the world is I link with URLs to other things on the web, on the internet. Okay, great. Other tools do things a different way. How, what, does, what is that middle space where the, the thing I've been building weaves elegantly in with the thing that other people are curating in other tools? And do we need a neutral space? Is there a playground, a sandbox, a middle spot that is that spot where there begins to emerge a shared memory? 
and where somebody trying to figure out what to do about the Delta variant would know where to go to find the work that Pete is pulling together right now. What does that, what does that middle space look like? Or are we just doomed forever to, to go to a website with a dashboard with links out to other websites? Is that, is that it? Is that, is that kind of what this looks like? And I'm trying to figure out how do we enrich that experience and take it not into full singing and dancing uh, augmented reality space or XR, which I don't think is the answer, but into some other multi-layered transmedia playground where these things can dance together. And, and that, that seems like a missing thing to me somehow, or maybe somebody's doing it and I'm not reading it that way or noticing it that way, but I think that's important to what we're doing somehow. Uh, and with that, any wrapping comments on this excellent call? This has been really helpful and generative. Thank you. And you don't need to say your comments in wrap, although it would be appreciated. Wow. Terrific call. Really inspiring. Yeah, um, so, Pete, let's pick a let's pick a time for an all hands invite call for the FAC and um, you and me or everybody on this let, call or let's you and I pick a time that works for us and then and put the broad the call out to everybody let's how about this how about this okay room? so uh is this Friday okay works for me what time cool. Friday? um this Friday I have a call I uh, just uh ba -da -ba -da. I have a call at 8 a.m and then I'm free much of the day after that so we have flotilla at noon typically. Great. Um, How about 10 a.m. Pacific? It'd be nice to give flotilla a little bit more breathing room. Okay. So uh, 9 a.m.? No, the other way. Uh, the other like way. 11, 11 a.m. Yeah, I think 11 a.m. Flot flotilla is at 9 to, and. To oh, at 10. 9. It I'm might, sorry. It you might said, go over. You said noon, and I was thinking Pacific. You're sorry. Totally yeah, I'm, I'm Eastern. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize entirely. Um, 11 a.m. Pacific? No, for me. 90-minute call, call? I, I fear that if we do the one, I, I like that we're limiting calls now to an hour. I fear that an hour is not going to give us enough time to actually. Uh, and the, damn. so so now I wonder, I I think that the next call should be about OGM as, as uh, hashtag rather than. That's a good call too. I just want to make some progress on the fact file. Or do you well, think that, or do you think that the conversation of, OGM is hashtag either preempts or completely changes the fact conversation. Yeah. Good point. I, mean, I think, I think, I think, you know, is OGM, well, <laughs> what is OGM? <laughs> it just seems like it's the subject has to be the subject of the Friday call before anything okay, else, so which includes hashtag and all, all kinds of entity questions. Okay, so Friday at 11, I'll set up a call and put up a general invite for like, like is OGM a hashtag plus what, would, what does it mean to be part of OGM? Which, which folds into the fact conversation as well. I, I think the way I would say that, so we all know what hashtag means in this context. I think yeah. the way to, to, to phrase that for other folks is, uh, is OGM a movement or an organization? Okay. Um, also, one thing we might want to start introducing there um, is what Pete brought up last week around metrics um, and time boxing. So it might be good to trial that in that meeting, just saying like this portion of the conversation should take 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and this I don't is know, a I'm just, fuzzy, this is a fuzzy enough topic that I'm not sure how to yeah. box it. I'm I'm just this, is, to make sure. this is a tough one to start that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I agree. I'm just trying to make sure. I, I'm, I worry that this could kind of spiral out basically and not, we don't come away with what we're looking to come away with. So I'm just trying to figure out how we ensure that we have a- How, how about, um, I, I, so maybe you and me, Phil, and maybe other folks can keep trying to redirect the call to once we're talking, once we're floating away from yeah. is OGM and movement or organization, maybe we can just bring it back. But okay. part of that question also is when you think about Black Lives Matter, for example, you know, hashtag BLM, there's a real mission here, right? I mean, there's a purpose, right? So what, so, so we have a broad purpose. I mean, my purpose is, you know, soil, soil health, right? We got to restore soil health. 
that makes it real easy because everything is moving into the same direction. So, so the, the path towards that direction may change, right? The analogy right. of water running down the hill, but it's drawn to the same direction, no matter if, what the obstacles are in the way. So Black Lives Matter operates pretty much in the same way. And most movements op operate in that way. There's a purpose. So I think it would be so much helpful you know, to, to have a defined purpose. We're working on you know, climate change, social restoration, things like that. So, so the line I used at the very beginning to describe OGM was helping humans make better decisions together, which has some side implications like, oh my God, we're in such political turmoil. How do we, we don't trust each other. How do we even come together to make decisions? Yes, that's included. Um, the logic for decisions, where's the, how do we sort through the facts? What do we, what's true and what's not true? What I, yes, that's part of OGM. But for me, that was always a really good unifying thread. And if somebody said, what is OGM? And we're trying to help hu humans all humans make better decisions together. And, and that's worked well for me. I don't know if it works for anybody else, but that's my unifying thread. But Black Lives Matter is brilliant, right? Because one hashtag says, tells the whole story. Yeah. And of course, they may be more narrowly focused, but um, if it, uh, the moment we have to explain what we mean, <laughs> then you know, it, it, uh, it gets more difficult to convey. Agreed. Real quickly into there, I, I, I've got an intuition that you put two at, at least two hashtags together. So, um, uh, so the the one that the movement that Jordan wanted to illuminate around the world was uh, Meta Project, um, and by that he means the most important project that we can all be working on together is the Meta Project, um, and then. Lionsburg is still going to be an organization for a long time and it's doing a very specific part of the meta project. So then you want to use two hashtags together, uh, pound uh, Lionsburg, pound meta project. And then you have pound OGM, pound meta project, pound CSC, pound meta project. So when you put the two together, you've got a combination of a focused organization and a larger movement that that organization has subscribed to and, and, and uh, tries to empower. Yeah, one one thing with the Black Lives Matter, it is like Open Global Mind itself isn't saying, like it's not it's not a movement, it's not an action. So like weaving the world is is an action. So if you had OGM and weaving the world, or whatever we decide the action hashtag to be, I think that would be powerful. Um, but yeah. Cool. Thank you. Anybody with a closing thought before we wrap this call? Uh, Great question. Um, Who's going to be responsible for the uh, work product? I think we need to think ourselves about what the work product of that call is. And I would love to create a, a OGM wiki document that we can stare at during the call or something like that, 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 that contains whatever our work product is. That'd be, yeah. that'd be useful. That That's easy. Nice. Sorry, Pete, what? You're locally muted. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, who's responsible for creating the, the starter thing that you um, I will send out the invite to everybody and write that up. Pete, do you mind being the one or shall I, uh, or well, Phil and I, I can, can be the take one. a swing at? Okay, thank you. If I can help Pete, let me know. I trust you to do it without me, however. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Um, hey, thank you all. It's lonely out here in space, um, <laughs> but, but the food is good because like the mess, the mess hall can make anything. Um, Great call, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really great call. Great call. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Be well.